Good, okay, good afternoon. This meeting of the Board of Trustees is now called to order. I'll now read the usual public notice. The meetings of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York are open to the public, and the Board welcomes the interest of those who attend. The public has ample opportunity to communicate with the Board. Public hearings on the Board's policy calendar are scheduled one week prior to the Board's regular meetings, and members of the public who wish to communicate with the Board are invited to express their views at such public hearings. Furthermore, the Board holds additional public hearings each year in all of the five boroughs at which members of the public may also speak. In addition, written communications to the Board are distributed to all trustees. The Board must carry out the functions assigned to it by law and therefore will not okay, tolerate conduct by members of the public that disrupt its meetings. In the event of disruptions, including noise, which interferes with board discussion, after appropriate warning, I will ask the security staff to remove persons engaging in disruptive conduct. The university may seek disciplinary and or criminal sanctions against persons who engage in conduct that violates the university's rules or state laws which will prohibit interference with the work of public bodies. I'd like to uh, also ask that, if, uh, that you mute your cell phones or handheld devices. As usual, CUNY TV is transmitting the public sessions of this afternoon's meeting of the Board of Trustees live on cable channel 75. This meeting is also being webcast live at www.cuny.edu slash livestream, providing service worldwide via personal computers and mobile devices. The public sessions of this board will be available as a podcast within 24 hours and can also be accessed via the CUNY website. Let me extend a warm welcome to trustees, new trustees, Fernando Ferrer and Sandra Wilkin, who joined the board on July 1st and in that period of time have become very active members. So welcome aboard to the board. I would also like to extend a special welcome, and she's going to have to bear with me. I'm working on it. I'm working on it, Chica. <laughs> Chica Oyejukwa, who replaces Joseph Awaji as a student trustee on the board and as interim chairperson of the University Student Senate, and in a very brief period of time, let me tell you, she is on it instantly. Welcome to this board. A special welcome to Jose Luis Cruz, the new president of Lehman College. Welcome aboard, Mr. President. <laughs> president Michelle Anderson of Brooklyn College, who is a new president also. Welcome and congratulations. <laughs> Boy, we just have name after name. Mary Lou Billick, <laughs> Dean of the CUNY School of Law. Welcome aboard. Dr. Mary Pearl, who was recently appointed as Dean of Macaulay Honors College after serving as in an in interim capacity since February of 2016. Welcome. <laughs> and last but not least, the person who has been getting more applause than anybody else at this table, Dr. Christopher Rosa, the Interim Vice Chancellor hey. for Student Affairs. <laughs> He's embarrassing all of us, okay? He's killing us here. Uh, Chica, you wanted to say a few words. I do. Thank you, Chairperson Thompson. It's really a pleasure to, um, to serve on this board as a sole student representative. I'm humbled by this opportunity, and I'd be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to thank my predecessor, Joseph Awaji, for his service to the board and to the University Student Senate and the, commu the CUNY com community at large. During my short tenure as interim chairperson of USS and student trustee, I've had the opportunity to meet with members of the chancellery and members of the board array on array of university-related matters. I want to thank Chancellor Milken and Senior Vice Chancellor Hershenson for taking time to join USS at our scholarship dinner on September 9th. We were able to award nearly 100 students with scholarships, and the scholarship recipients were excited to meet and hear remarks from our chancellor. So thank you to all of you, and I hope to work with you in these next few weeks. I'm pleased to report that the Puerto Rican Bar Association will be honoring the City University of New York for its academic excellence at its 59th Scholarship Fund Gala on September 29th. Congratulations also to Chancellor Milken on receiving the Nicholas Capetta Child Welfare Award from New Yorkers for Children at their annual fall gala on September 15th for his leadership in developing programs at CUNY to help foster children pursue or to help force the children pursue college degrees. Congratulations, Chancellor. Nick Scapetta. 
I'm also pleased to report that several colleges are celebrating special anniversaries this year. The College of Staten Island launched, launched its year-long 60th anniversary at commencement on June 2nd. The CUNY Graduate School of Journalism marked its 10th anniversary on September 7th. And your college launched its year-long 50th anniversary on September 16th. Your college was also ranked sixth in the nation among the top 100 colleges where applications are on the rise, according to the National Center for Education Statistics. I'd like to report that the board held its annual Manhattan Borough Hearing and Public Hearing on the board calendar on Monday, September 19th. Trustee Wellington Chen chaired the, the hearing that was also attended by Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, myself, Trustees Fernando Ferrer and Brian Oberfeld, University Faculty Chair and Faculty Trustee Kay Conway, and as I pointed out, University Student Senate Chair and Trustee Chika Onyikujukwa. I'm working, working, working. <laughs> Members of the Chancellery and the Manhattan College Presidents and Deans or their representatives. A summary of the proceedings have been circulated to the trustee and the Chancellor's Cabinet, and a transcript is available in the Office of the Secretary. On behalf of the Board, I'd like to extend our deepest condolences to the family of Dr. Henry Hirsch Wasser, who passed away on September 4th. He was 97 years old. Dr. Wasser served as a trustee ex officio on this board from September 1981 to May 1986, and had been the board's faculty member emeritus since that time. An eminent figure in the American higher education in that field, Dr. Wasser became the executive director of the CUNY Academy for the Humanities and Sciences in 1986, and it served as the Academy's Executive Director Emeritus since 2011. He will be greatly missed. Let me now call on Trustee Fernando Ferrer to announce college and faculty honors. Mr. Ferrer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's my pleasure <coughs> to report that two prominent members of the CUNY family were named MacArthur Genius Fellows last week. They are Graduate School Alumna, Class of 2004, Maggie Nelson, and Hunter College Master Artist in Residence in the Playwriting MFA program, Brandon Jacobs Jenkins. Congratulations on these outstanding honors. Uh, City College Chemistry <coughs> Professor Mahesh Laxman was named a Fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry, which is the world's leading community of scientists in that field. And City College Grove School of Engineering Assistant Professor Candace Brakewood was listed in Mass Transit Magazine's 2016 Top 40 Under 40 National Honors. Congratulations as well. Hunter College Distinguished Professor of English, Mina Alexander, was named Poet in Residence at Ghetto Nuovo in Venice, Italy. And Hunter College Music Department Professor Ryan Caberly was named one of the best living jazz trombonists mm -hmm. by the International Downbeat Critics Poll. Congratulations to all of them. Absolutely. Mr. Thank Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee Ferrer. <laughs> Let me now call on Trustee Ken Sunshine, the Vice Chair of the Committee on Student Affairs and Special Programs, to announce student and alumni honors. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to announce that Medgar Evers College student Ashley Warmington, a participant in the college's entrepreneurship and experiential learning lab, recently became the first woman to receive the grand prize at CUNY's Smart Pitch Competition, winning $10,000 for successfully pitching her business, Cozy Oasis, a home sublet concierge company. Congratulations. Three students from Borough of Manhattan Community College were named Kaplan Scholars over the summer. They are science majors, Nor Besida Bagablia and Melanie Paji, and animation and motion picture graphics major, Jasmine Braithwaite. <clears throat> Congratulations. York College alum, Ray Warren, class of 1976 and co-founder of the York College radio station in 1974, <coughs> was recently appointed as president of Telemundo Deportes. Congratulations. Hunter College alum, Jen Pavol, MFA class of 2005, has become the first female umpire in professional baseball in more than 10 years. All right. And that is really cool. That I think. is. That is very cool. And Hunter alum, 
alumna, uh, Mary Beth Meenan, MSED, class of 2006, was among 17 honorees chosen from a pool of 4,600 nominees to receive the Big Apple Award for her outstanding work as a public school teacher. Congratulations. And finally, the announcement of the new CUNY Cultural Corps took place at the CUNY Service Corps kickoff at Borough of Manhattan Community College on September 9th. Permit me, uh, Chairman Thompson, to draw everyone's attention to the screens for a short video produced by CUNY TV. <laughs> I'm Tina Beth Pina with your CUNY News Bulletin. CUNY unveiled its newest initiative that enables the students to get real hands-on experience at some of the city's most famed cultural institutions. More than 700 students from 13 CUNY campuses attended the official launch of the CUNY Welcome Cultural Corps, the new arts internship New program that gives CUNY students crucial career experience at New York City's top cultural institutions. What we're trying to do, and this is a very important part of it, is to provide opportunities for our students in addition to the education that they get at CUNY, which they might not be able to get anywhere else. They get internships, paid internships, so it's meaningful work at great places where they might not otherwise have that opportunity and maybe will launch a career. And on the other side, it introduces these great cultural institutions into the cultural center of the country to the talent, the diversity, the enthusiasm, the drive, the ambition of CUNY students. First school year, there's 32 institutions involved. Uh, they're part of the cultural institution group. The second year is going to spread out to all the rest of the institutions in the city. And we really want to keep this going for a long time. We don't want this to be a one-shot deal. The 32 institutions involved include MoMA PS1, Queens Botanical Garden, Carnegie Hall, the American Museum of Natural History, Brooklyn Academy of Music, Staten Island Museum, and so many more institutions across all five boroughs. The paid 24-week internships are made possible through a $1 million investment from the Rockefeller Foundation and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. We are fortunate to uh, have resources that uh, we are eager to bring to bear uh, on some of the world's most pressing social challenges. Um, and uh, to connect young people uh, to these kinds of opportunities is uh, just the sort of work we wish to be doing. So we're really thrilled to be doing this. The chosen 85 students will work 12 hours a week and will earn $12 an hour in a variety of capacities, including development, audience services, education, special events, archives, HR technology and exhibitions, as well as participate in cultural enrichment programs featuring workshops about relevant topics in arts and culture. New York is such a diverse city that it needs to show that we're a diverse people. We're not just one group of people, we're not just two. And it's just awesome in me personally, being an Afro-Puerto Rican, to be able to take part in that. When, you, when I was little, yeah, I was always drawing. I loved going to the museum with my family. It's just like a part of me, because art is just something that's like amazing, it's, it's beautiful. I've seen shows at Lincoln Center uh, for the performances by Juilliard students, and I never knew, for example, that they were free because I had never been exposed to something like that. But when you participate in things like that, like it broadens your horizon so much more, and it encourages people to pursue things that they didn't know were even possible. The sky is definitely the limit for all the CUNY students who take part in the cultural tour. It's a great match, and I, I couldn't be more grateful for our partners in this. The CUNY Cultural Corps is building on the success of the CUNY Service Corps, which is now in its fourth year. For CUNY TV, I'm Tina Beth Pina. Thank you, Trustee Sunshine, for that report. Uh, a list of grants and gifts received by the university subsequent to the June 27, 2016 meeting is available around the table and in the trustees' meeting books. <coughs> Let me now call on Chancellor Milliken to present an update of recent activities. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, everyone knows we're starting another school year with a lot of new energy and a lot to look forward to. I'm optimistic about the year ahead in part because what we've already achieved. First, I want to join in welcoming our new trustees to the board, bringing a wealth of experience that will provide able guidance for the university. And of course, we settled our labor contracts this summer with faculty and staff, agreeing on well-deserved raises for the people responsible for the great work CUNY does every day. We've come through a particularly inspiring commencement season last spring with a record number of graduates, and I want to draw attention to that fact. 
At a time when everyone agrees that educational attainment is the key to individual opportunity and to the city's economic success, CUNY graduated the most students in its history. In addition, our students are receiving deserved recognition for exceptional quality. The Macaulay Honors College just received the highest ratings among public honors programs, ranking with some of the most notable programs in the country. Gutman Community College was just named the number one community college in the state after just four years of operation. And the online bachelor's degree program at the School of Professional Studies was ranked the best in the state by U.S. News and World Report. We continue to take steps to ensure that we're delivering on our mission, in particular providing access to cities underrepresented populations. Just this morning, Mayor de Blasio, Schools Chancellor Farina, and I announced that the CUNY application fee will be eliminated for all low-income public high school seniors in the city starting this fall. The expansion increases the number of students with financial need who will not pay the $65 application fee from 60, uh, 6,500 to 37,500 students. I'm particularly pleased that we'll have the opportunity with a new master plan and strategic plans to help chart CUNY's future. I believe we will look back on this year as a pivotal one. The master plan was part of a collaborative process. I'm delighted that we were able to delay the state's deadline so that our new trustees would have this summer to consider and comment on the plan, which you are scheduled to vote on today. Central to our planning is what we have referred to as a connected CUNY. We we'll place a greater emphasis on outcomes and the success of our students, as well as on our ability to advance our goals by leveraging CUNY's great assets through more collaboration among our CUNY campuses and with other institutions in the city. In other words, CUNY will collaborate as never before, both internally and outside the university. This vision builds on goals I've been discussing with the board and in speeches and in smaller groups around the city, building on the work of my colleagues at this table and the Strategic Planning Steering Committee. The draft master plan was first posted in May. At the June meeting, the chairman and I uh, provided the plan as an information item to the board so that new members would have time to consider it over the summer. I have personally read the many comments from faculty, staff, and students, and we've made changes over time to reflect those comments. Included in the plan, We'll be scaling up innovative strategies like ASAP and implementing others to significantly increase graduation rates. Provost Rabinowitz has led a university-wide task force that's developing compelling recommendations that we believe will deliver great improvements in our remediation programs for incoming students who are not college ready. We're focused as never before on increasing opportunities for our students to participate in internships and experiential learning programs which will improve employment prospects upon graduation. We will significantly expand the availability of online courses and degrees offered by CUNY faculty, building on our recent successes. We're confident that CUNY is growing into the model of what a 21st century urban university can be. A lot of hard work will be required to realize these ambitions, but it's the best kind of work we might do, and it will bring substantial and measurable results to the people who matter, our students and benefit the City of New York. Two final points. First, I'm extremely pleased to bring to the board recommendation for the appointment of Matthew Sapienza, Senior Vice Chancellor and Chief Financial Officer. This well-deserved promotion recognizes the significant contributions and leadership Matt has provided. He's an expert on the CUNY budget and before that, the DOE budget. He's done much to improve CUNY's financial performance and bringing efficiencies and cost savings to our administration. It's an important role he will continue to lead going forward as part of our ongoing efforts to adopt best business practices and invest every dollar possible in our classrooms and in support of our students. This action will be part of the Chancellor's report today. Now, finally, I pretty much guess that most, if not everyone in this room, will be doing at 9 o'clock this evening. We are, to put it mildly, in the middle of an extraordinary election season. I'm delighted that CUNY has launched a drive to get students engaged and to encourage them to vote. I can think of few lessons more valuable for our students this fall than to learn that what they do matters, every single one, and that their right to vote is a prize that they should honor by exercising it. I want to show you a very brief video uh, that we're using to encourage our students to register. I think you'll enjoy it. Hi, I'm Tina Beth Pina from CUNY TV. And I'm Chico Nyojukwa, the interim chairperson of the University Student Senate. And, and we, we want, want you to, to register, register to vote. vote. CUNY, along with the New York City Board of Elections, is making registering to vote easy. 
All you have to do is log into your individual CUNY First account and click the NYS voter registration form. You will then see a nearly completed form. All you have left to do is to fill out the two required fields. Then just print it out, sign it, and mail the postage paid form or leave it at a designated campus office. Either way, you don't need a stamp. Deadline for voter registration is Friday, October 14th. So make sure you meet it so you can vote for your future this November. I see we have a media star amongst us these days. <laughs> All right, thank you, Chancellor. Uh, let me present the following item. Item number one, Chancellor's Universal Report for September 26, 2016, including addenda, errata, and table items. You'll find a copy of the Chancellor's Universal Report for September 26, 2016, including its addendum, errata, and table items on the table. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Any discussion on the Chancellor's University Report for September 26, 2016? All right, can we have a vote to uh, approve the report? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Motion's approved. Item number two, <clears throat> approval of the minutes of the regular board meetings and executive session of June 27, 2016. You'll find a copy of the draft minutes for the regular board meetings and executive session of the June 27th, 2016 board meeting in your meetings books. Um, do I have a second? second? Are there any discussions of the minutes for June 27th, 2016 meeting? None. Do I have a motion to approve? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion's approved. Let me now call on the Committee for Fiscal Affairs, Chair Barry Schwartz, to present his report. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, Committee on Fiscal Affairs and the Subcommittee on Investment met in a joint session on September 7th. And after welcoming new members to the Fiscal Affairs Committee, uh, Trustee Fernando Ferrer, who will serve as our Vice Chair, uh, Trustee Robert Mujica, and Trustee Lorraine Cortez Vasquez, as well as you, Chairman Thompson, will be serving on the Investment Subcommittee. <clears throat> and with there being no policy items on the agenda, we then heard from Vice Chancellor Sapienza, who gave us a status report on budget and fiscal planning. Following his report, uh, Dean Robert Patchick gave us a report on the university's enrollment projections uh, for the fall semester. And after Dean Patchick's report, the Fiscal Affairs Committee meeting was adjourned and the Subcommittee on Investment was called to order. Uh, we had no policy items on that agenda either. And the subcommittee proceeded to discuss issues regarding the portfolio and executive session, including a performance update from our investment advisors. Following these presentations, the meeting was adjourned. And Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number three, Committee on Academic Policy, Programs, and <coughs> Research. Let me call on Committee Chair <coughs> Wellington Chen to present the following items. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this uh, September 5th, 2016 meeting, the committee approved the following policy matters. Calendar item number 3A, BMCC Associate of Arts in Economics. BMCC is packaging existing economic courses into a degree program designed to transfer to senior colleges. An articulation agreement has already been signed with Brooklyn College and others are being developed. The college believes that this will improve retention and graduation rates. Calendar item number 3B. Queensboro Community College, John Jay College. Associate of Science, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Information Security. There are many employment opportunities in cybersecurity in both the private and public sectors. The curriculum in that dual joint program is consistent with the recommendation of the National Institute for Standards and Technology. This combined with a partnership with the Cybersecurity Workforce Alliance an association of private sector cybersecurity employers should provide excellent employment opportunities for our students upon graduation. Calendar item number 3C, the City University of New York, approval of Startup New York participating business through the City College of New York. The, uh, it, the initiative, this initiative authorizes the creation of a tax-free zone on the City Cal campus for technology in technology business. This, partnership with City College will bring internships, donations, 
faculty research opportunities and assist them with curricular development in, to various constituents at City College. Calendar item number 3D, York College. Approval of startup New York participating business through the York College. This initiative authorizes the creation of a tax-free zone on York College's campus for York analytical laboratories and environmental testing laboratory. This partnership with York College will bring internships, faculty research grants, and opportunities, including access to laboratories for various constituents at York, as well as jointly sponsored conference. Mr. Chairman, item 3A through 3D were approved by the committee. I recommend their approval by the board. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, let's put items 3A through 3D up for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Items 3A through D through 3D are approved. Item 3E. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, calendar item number 3E, City University of New York 2016 to 2020 Master Plan. Every four years, the Board of Regents of the Department of Education of the State of New York requires CUNY to submit a Master Plan for the following four years. This plan articulates the wide-reaching goals of the university for that period and the implementation process for those goals. At its meeting on June 6, 2016, the Committee on Academic, Academic Policy Programs and research recommended that full board approve the master plan, which was on June 27, uh, 2016 calendar for informational purposes and is presented today for action. And I think Mr. Chairman wants to say a few words. Okay. Uh, just one thing, and, and do we have a second on that? Second. Okay. We're going to open this item for discussion. Uh, first, let me find out, uh, does the chancellor have anything, any comments at all? Um, Mr. Chairman, I made some remarks about the master mm -hmm. plan at the beginning of the meeting, and I'll uh, now just respond to questions. Okay, other comments or questions? Yes. So just a comment. Um, so we did take some time as students to review the master plan, um, and there are a lot of great initiatives outlined in here, um, more so the um, NYC uh, Merit Scholarship, which has been something USS has advocated for for years, and different um, programs that enhance the, ex the idea of the excellence um, of our education here at our university. But there is one thing, you know, we did want to highlight um, this idea of affordability, which has always been our fight this past mm -hmm. year, which we're going into October and we're looking at the capital budget operations. And so last night at our USS plenary meeting, our um, entire body was able to unanimously adopt a resolution calling on a tuition freeze, which has always been our stance and will continue to be our stance. And I see here, you know, the university is calling and looking for alternate funds of sources. And so as we go into this year, we just, Hope that that's something that the board keeps in mind has been our stance, and we want to put it out on the table that will continue to be our stance, that we continue to keep this university affordable. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Other comments or statements? Anything else? Okay. Um, let's bring the resolution to a vote. All, all of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Okay, it's, it, the motion has been approved. And I believe, uh, is there anything further to report? Yes, just informational item. Uh, University Provost Rabinovich informed the committee of the university's plans for comprehensive reform of the undergraduate developmental education in reading, writing, and mathematics. Several CUNY colleges and, C and the CUNY Central Office have pioneered alternative developmental interventions that show promise for improving student outcomes in all areas, including in math, where the need for improvement is greatest. A university-wide task force met all of last academic year and continues to meet this year to make recommendations for the development and implementation of a plan to revise and update policies and practices related to development education, including placement into developmental courses, developmental coursework and options, and exit from developmental programs. The recommendations have been accepted by the university provost and by the Chancellor, implementation of recommendation will commence in fall 2016. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Trustee Chen. Um, item number four, Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration. Let me call on Committee Chair Fernando Ferrer to present the following items. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee met on September 7th and um, acted on the following items. Item 4A amends section 6.1 of the bylaws to create three new instructional staff titles. 
clinical professor medical series, CLIP instructor, and CUNY start instructor. These titles were negotiated and included in the 2010-2017 <coughs> PSC CUNY collective bargaining agreement that was approved by the board in June and ratified by the, un by the union in August. Because of the timing of the contract's approval, the board is asked to waive notice of this bylaw amendment in order to make these titles available for use immediately. The committee recommends approval of this matter and I move it. Do we want to do each item? You need a second. You need a second. Okay, why don't you continue through? We'll take all the items together, Mr. Item 4B pertains to an established practice associated with the ratification of new labor agreements. Negotiations with PSC CUNY have long held at certain university employees holding instructional staff titles who would otherwise be covered by the collective bargaining agreement are by virtue of the confidential policy or management managerial responsibilities of their positions excluded from coverage under the agreement. This, this resolution is consistent with actions adopted following board approval of previous collective bargaining agreements. Committee recommends approval of this matter and I move it. Item 4C, amends the governance plan of CUNY School of Medicine, removing the designation of Chair of Department of Clinical Medicine as an ex officio member of the School of Medicine's Executive Committee and the Personnel and Budget Committee, respectively. The Chair of the Department of Clinical Medicine is responsible for providing overall leadership and oversight to the department and its faculty, enabling the Chair of the Department of Clinical Medicine to have both voice and vote on academic and personnel matters. The proposed amendment to the governance plan was approved by the CUNY School of Medicine's Faculty Council and is recommended by the Dean. The committee also recommends this matter, and I move it. Calendar items 4D through 4J are naming opportunities at a number of our colleges, which I present as a group. Glad to report that these namings reflect monetary gifts to the university in the amount of $5,850,000. They are the Paul H. Chook Department of Information Systems and Statistics at Zicklin School at Baruch, the Miriam and Charles Tannenbaum Classroom at Baruch, the Robert M. Class Glassman 48 Lecture Hall at Brooklyn College, the Stuart Z. Katz Endowed Professorship at City College, the, Zo the Jody Graduate Dance Studio at Hunter, the Theodore Keel Visiting Pro uh, Fellow in Transportation Policy at Hunter, and the LCC Tepper Visiting Education Fellow at Hunter. The committee recommends these matters, and I move them. The uh, item 4K authorizes the chancellor to appoint Linda T. Chin as a commissioner of the CUNY Civil Service System for a prorated six-year term commencing September 8, 2016 and expiring May 31, 2022. She replaces Tilden Lamel, who has resigned after serving as commissioner since 1997. Ms. Chin's appointment will enable the university to continue to operate under the rules and regulations of the Civil Service Commission as approved by the New York State Education Law and governed by state civil service law. Accordingly, uh, I move this item. And finally, item 4L appoints Dr. Charles W. Wills as Distinguished Professor of Philosophy at the Graduate Center. The committee has reviewed this appointment and recommends its approval, and I move it. Mr. Chairman, I'm also pleased to tell you that Professor Mills is with us today, and I'd like to ask uh, President Chase Robinson to briefly introduce him to us. Thank you very much. The question of Charles Mills' influence and reputation can only be answered in superlatives. So begins one of the many letters written in copious praise of Charles Mills and his achievement. I am extraordinarily proud to introduce Professor Mills to you today, the Graduate <coughs> Center's 54th distinguished professor. Professor Mills is considered one of the world's most influential philosophers of race and one of the founders of critical race theory. He comes to the Graduate Center from Northwestern where he was the John Evans Professor of Moral and Intellectual Philosophy. 
Before joining Northwestern, Professor Mills was Distinguished Professor of Philosophy at the University of Chicago at Illinois. He received his PhD from the University of Toronto. Professor Mills' publications include some six books and 75 scholarly articles and edited volumes. His widely acclaimed book, The Racial Contract, is foundational to the field of critical race theory. Professor Mills has participated in literally hundreds of <coughs> interviews, conferences, <coughs> colloquia, and lectures, both nationally and internationally. His inter- and intradisciplinary work is staggering, connecting work in philosophy, history, social psychology, and sociology. As one of my colleagues put it, his projects are courageous and philosophically powerful, and he's had a major impact in creating an intellectually vibrant and rigorous communicative space for marginalized philosophers. We are thrilled about the contributions that Professor Mills will be making to the PhD program in philosophy, especially in this historical moment his work will be of great relevance to many of our doctoral programs in the humanities, in the social sciences, and also in the sciences, greatly enhancing the intellectual life of the Graduate Center, the city, and the City University of New York. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, well after that I was wondering, who is he talking about exactly? I was thinking of looking around the room to see if I could find this guy. Okay, so I'm a Jamaican immigrant. I don't have to tell you that U.S. is a nation of immigrants. And if you grow up in Jamaica, it means you grow up on um, U.S. comics, U.S. television, and U.S. movies. So I figured if I ever got to the U.S., then my destination should be you know, either Gotham City or Metropolis. <laughs> no, there were some detours along the way. Um, Norman, Oklahoma, Chicago, maybe not quite. But hey, here I am in the end, so and it's great to be here, guys. Um, as you've just heard, I'm in philosophy. We normally think of philosophy as you know, very remote, very detached from things, but I'm in social and political philosophy, and the whole point is a philosophy that's engaged with things, and as such, um, I think that the Graduate Center, CUNY Graduate Center, and CUNY as a system is an excellent place to be because of the university's long commitment to an engaged scholarship, to a scholarship that is not sort of in the ivory tower, but is aimed at sort of in a, ameliorating things in everyday life. And as Chase has just pointed out, my specialization is race. And unfortunately, there's been very little non-racist work done in philosophy. There's a long tradition of the classical scholars in philosophy making racist statements, but anti-racist philosophy is comparatively recent. In this time period, as we know, you know, I'm sure we're all going to be watching the debates this evening, um, you know, and then even after the election, these issues are not going away. Insofar as philosophers' pretensions are to illuminate the world, to sort of shed light on the human condition, the problem has been that the focus historically has tended to be on a subset of humans rather than humanity in its full multiplicity and diversity, humans of all colors and all races. My hope is that at the Grad Center, I'll be able to sort of continue with this project of you know, having a philosophy that's going to be sort of crucial for the important process of helping Americans adjust to the transition that we've all been talking about, the transition to a non-white majority, perhaps by 2040 or so. We want this to go smoothly rather than roughly. We don't want riots, we don't want demonstrations. We want <coughs> an atmosphere of collegiality and amity. To the extent that philosophy can gain any kind of um, perspective on helping people see these things, I would like to hope that you know, the philosophy I'm doing and other like-minded people within the CUNY system can help with this project. Thank you. Congratulations again, Professor. Uh, let me ask for a second um, for items 4A through L. Second. Uh, is there any discussion on these items? All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Fine. Um, Trustee Ferrer, are there any, anything further to report? That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. thank you for your report. Uh, item number five, Committee on Facilities, Planning, and Management. Let me call on Committee Vice Chair Sandra Wilkin to present the following items.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. The Board of Trustees Committee on Facilities Planning and Management considered four items at its meeting of September 7, 2016. Following the discussion and consideration of these items, Vice Chancellor Judy Bertram gave a presentation on the capital budget process for the upcoming year. Here are the resolutions listed in this board meeting as calendar items 5A through 5D. 5A, New York City College of Technology, execution of lease renewal for 25 Chapel Street, Park Ground Floor, Brooklyn, New York, to authorize the general counsel to execute a lease renewal for 17 months for approximately 21,000 square feet of flexible office and classroom space on part of the ground floor. 5B, Baruch, City College, College of Staten Island, and Queens College upgrade of fire alarm systems in various buildings to request the City University Construction Fund to execute a purchase order to design, purchase, and install a fire alarm system in 21 different buildings to upgrade the system as needed. 5C, Baruch College, Library and Technology Building, Student Computer Lab, to request the City University Construction Fund to execute a construction contract for renovation of the Student Computer Lab in the Library and Technology Building. 5D, Borough of Manhattan College, 199 Chamber Street, new window installation to request the City University Construction Fund to execute a construction contract for the installation of a new windows on the second floor of 199 Chamber Street. I hereby request your approval of these calendar items. And this concludes the report of the chair, vice chair of the Committee on Facilities Planning and Management. Let, do I have a second? Second. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? Or these items? None? All right, all those in favor of items 5A through D? Any of all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Motions are approved. And again, thank you, Trustee Wilkin. Uh, let me present item number six as a non-action item. Calendar item number six is being read for informational purposes only. It serves as notice of an action taken by the Board of Trustees Executive Committee on September 7, 2016 of an item recommended by the Chancellor regarding the appointment of Mary Pearl as Dean of the Macaulay Honors College. We have an added item also for consideration. It is a naming resolution in, con in connection to a pledge of $30 million for alumnus Austin W. Marks to the Baruch College Fund for the benefit of Baruch College's School of Public and International Affairs. Let me read and move this resolution. Copies are available at your seats and around the table. Item seven, the naming of Austin W. Marks School of Public and International Affairs. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approve the naming of the Austin W. Marks School of Public and International Affairs. The explanation, Austin W. Marks has pledged $30 million to the Baruch College Fund for the benefit of Baruch's of Baruch College's School of Public and International Affairs. His gift represents the largest one-time gift ever made to Baruch College and nationally the sixth largest naming gift of a School of Public Affairs. It also ranks among the largest gifts ever received in the history of CUNY. Mr. Marks's generosity will provide both current operating funds and endowment support for the School of Public and International Affairs and its newly launched Masters in International Affairs program. Among other things, funds will provide for the hiring of new faculty chairs and resources to attract and retain outstanding faculty, and it will enable the school to double the amount of support that students receive, receive in the form of scholarships, assistantships, and subsidized experimental learning. The School of Public and International Affairs is the only public graduate school in New York City that is dedicated to training students in public and international affairs. And since 1994, it has offered undergraduate and graduate level degrees in public policy and administration, and Master of Science in Education programs in higher education administration and educational leadership. Beginning in the fall of 2017, the school will also offer a Master's of International Affairs degree. A 1965 graduate of Baruch 
Austin Marks is president and managing director of <coughs> AWM Investment Company Incorporated, an employee-owned investment firm. Mr. Marks previously endowed the Austin Marks Scholarship Fund, and he is a member of the Baruch College Fund Board of Trustees. To recognize his generosity, Baruch College hereby requests that the board approve the naming of its School of Public and International Affairs as the Austin W. Marks School of Public and International Affairs. Well, I ask, can I ask for a second on this item? Second. Is there any discussion on this item? Let me call in Ch Chancellor Milliken. Would you have a few words on this? Just uh, a couple of words, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, you have captured uh, the essence of Mr. Mark's extraordinarily generous gift in the resolution item, but I'm delighted to join in the recognition of an expression of gratitude to Austin Marks, who's making this gift. I had the opportunity to meet with uh, Mr. Marks this summer and to learn firsthand about his commitment to his alma mater and his vision for Baruch's leadership in public international affairs. And no one knows this better than Baruch President Wallerstein, who uh, has been working with Mr. Marks for years in his support of Baruch College. And I'd like to, to call on the President to say a few words. <clears throat> Thank you, Chancellor. Baruch Ta College is deeply grateful to our esteemed alumnus, Austin W. Marks, who graduated with a BBA degree in, in the class of 1965 for his extraordinary generosity. This $30 million gift will be transformative for our School of Public and International Affairs, enabling the school to join the front ranks of schools of public and international affairs in the United States and around the world, and bringing enhanced prestige and international visibility both to, to uh, Baruch and to CUNY. Thanks to Austin Marx's philanthropy, we will establish six new chaired faculty positions substantially increase scholarship and fellowship support for both undergraduate and graduate students, expand study abroad, study away, and internship programs for students to advance their education and careers, forge new partnerships with public policy leaders, organizations, and institutions, both domestically and abroad, and uh, develop and expand programming that will convene thought leaders for critical discussions around important public and international policy issues of the day. The gift also will establish a permanent endowment for the school. The timing of this gift is close to ideal, coming just as we are recruiting the inaugural class for our new master's degree in international affairs. Given Baruch's location 20 blocks south of the United Nations and astride the large community of national and international non-governmental organizations <coughs> located here in the city, we believe we are positioned to train students for careers in government at all levels, city, state, and, fe and federal, and for careers in international organizations, including the United Nations, as well as national and international non-governmental organizations. In the best tradition of the City University of New York, we will offer an undergraduate major and graduate degrees in public administration and international affairs at a fraction of the cost of similar degrees offered by other universities in the New York metropolitan area, including the competing programs at Columbia and NYU. And our market surveys indicate that there is substantial demand for these programs. Given our attractive price point, we are able to make careers in public and international affairs accessible to a broad range of students from New York and indeed from throughout the world. This is an exciting and important moment for Baruch College and for our School of Public Affairs, and we thank the board for the action they've taken today. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? All right, let's put this item to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? It is approved. Congratulations on that. <laughs> Chancellor, I believe you had a couple of uh, comments before we adjourn. Uh, only one, and uh, that is that after the action that you took uh, as part of the Chancellor's report today, uh, I want to join my colleagues in congratulating Matt Sapienza for his appointment as Senior Vice Chancellor and Chief Financial <laughs> Officer of the City of Any other comments? There being no further business, let me ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. 
Second? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>